Today we're going to talk about the worst part of running slow to run fast. I'm Lindsay Perry from CoachPerry.com where we help you get fitter, faster and stronger. We get tons of pushback from people because we want people to run such a large percentage of their training easy. Today we're going to unpack the worst parts of running slow all the time to help you to get over that and get the best out of your training. Why it is difficult to run slow is actually the patience behind it. We all want instant gratification. We all want to see results immediately when we get started with our training. And in particular, the running slow aspect in order for the ultimate goal to be able to run quicker is having patience and trust in the plan. We want to just make sure that you're not pushing yourself too hard every single time and causing injury, causing risk. And you just need to actually trust the process more than anything else and believe that what you are doing right and the structures that you are following will pay off further down the line. Part of that patience actually also comes down to nothing physiologically in the body happens overnight. We do need to give things a chance. With running slow, we do tend to find some very quick benefits to it. So the fact that you are recovering well, you're well rested before the next training session, almost immediately you'll start to feel better in those training sessions and not have that level of fatigue. But the actual aerobic conditioning, the physiological response and benefits that you're getting from those easy runs and having the patience behind it only happens much later on down the line so it is important as I mentioned trusting the process you will start feeling better and you will start to see those results just hang in there when we talk about running slow the metric we most commonly use is pace in reality we are trying to use pace to control the intensity so just so that you understand that that is what we're trying to do to get people to run easier of course that means that we are running at a slower pace and that does cause some changes in the biomechanics so people often feel uncomfortable largely because they are running slightly different to how they have been running over time what is very important to understand about running slower to run faster is that running at that slower pace, running at that low intensity, it reduces the forces that are going through muscles, tendons, ligaments and joints. So it is doing less damage even though in the initial phases it might feel a little bit uncomfortable and at some points actually people report feeling a little bit of discomfort that generally comes when we're running longer runs because the muscles are contracting in a slightly different way we do have to adapt to that over time but very importantly you're going to do less damage that means you're going to get more benefit out of your training in the long term another reason why sometimes we find running slow uh, so difficult is, is the psychological aspects of it you know this concept of running slower to get faster just doesn't actually make sense right you think that if you want to run faster you need to run faster and so it is a little bit of a misnomer in terms of okay I need to slow myself down in order to actually get faster just dealing with that on a day-to-day -day basis will really really becomes a bit of a struggle and so we need to just change our mindset around okay I don't always have to be running faster to get faster and in actual fact just change the psychology of that to then go running slower in the long term is going to make me a little bit faster running slower does require a lot more concentration because very often we're needing to actually really focus on our pace or our heart rate or the power or your perceived exertion and so we have to concentrate and focus on what we're doing in that session we can't just sort of head out and, and, and run it at whatever pace we want to get lost in our thoughts unfortunately at times. Very often when we start doing this you will become better at figuring out okay well my perceived exertion is this when I'm running a little bit slower and so you would then be able to manipulate your, your training runs just based on that feel. So the more you do this the more uh, apt you will be, be at um, measuring your, your, your pace with just a, a matter of feel. As we discussed earlier in the video we are using pace in essence to control intensity so because we are trying to get you to run easier for a lot of people 
that means running a lot slower regardless of what metric we are using to control intensity heart rate probably being the best one but what it does when we get people running at the right intensity is that it feels very very slow but remember what this is about this is about running slow to run faster so over time there is going to be a very gradual but very incremental increase in your easy running pace and that pace is still going to be for where you are at a low intensity so at the beginning that feeling of running and going I am so slow that is normal and it will improve but the most important thing is that when you get to do races and time trials you will make quite big incremental changes and that's what we train for we train to do better on race day another factor as to why it becomes quite tricky or difficult to run slow is the social aspect most of us really love running with people we part of clubs we like the social saturday get together let's go for our long run with a group of people the problem with that though is not everyone in your group or in your club is at the same level that you are at so when it comes to running in a group and you having to run your easy runs easy enough potentially being quite a bit slower than the rest of the group some instances you might be a little bit faster than certain members in the group that makes it quite tricky because now you almost on your own here so even though you want to have people around you you want that camaraderie that motivation in a training session you need to make sure that you are sticking to what your session prescribes the physiological response or the goal that you are trying to achieve from that particular training session keeping in mind if you're running in a group and you start chasing someone who's a little bit quicker than you you start pushing yourself outside of that aerobic or outside of that easy zone that in itself then leads to potential risk of injury that fatigue that build up of not being fresh enough before the next training session so it becomes a mind game it's something you need to be quite resilient to be able to handle running on your own but yes it, it really comes down more to not being able to always run with people recommendations around that is to maybe still get together run with people it helps if you all on the same page and you kind of run in circuits so if you're running with a partner or you're running with a friend it's a little bit easier that person can run up the road slightly maybe turn around come back for you just keeps the company there but keep in mind you have a particular goal that you need to be working towards a particular outcome of that session you're looking for and you need to make sure that you are sticking to what your program prescribes now that you know the worst parts of running slow to get fast if you are looking for ways to get fast check out the video on screen now don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe see you soon